Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Horrific Crimes of Ilsa Koch. After the Second World War, a number of war crimes trials took place to bring the perpetrators of crimes against humanity to justice. They were huge networks of concentration camps which were set up across Nazi Germany that inflicted such suffering and mass murder. What shocked the world further was the fact that much of the horror was carried out by young women, and women who had been brainwashed at a young age into the Nazi regime. Guards such as Irma Grazer and Elizabeth Volkenrath were sentenced to death and executed for their horrific crimes, which included mass murder and violent attacks upon prisoners. But one woman, who surprisingly wasn't killed after her war crimes trial, was Ilse Koch, who has been called the Witch of Buchenwald for the horrendous acts she performed inside the concentration camp that her husband oversaw. Ilse Koch was born in Dresden on the 22nd of September 1906. It was said as a child she was a polite and hard-working girl, who was also happy, and when she was 15 she began to study at an accountancy school. Following her studies, she then went to work as a bookkeeper, but at this time within Germany, many people were struggling. The economy was struggling to get back on its feet after the defeat during the First World War. And like so many people, Ilse turned to the Nazi party as she believed they would be the ones who would help save Germany. She was attracted to Hitler's politics and ideology and she became a supporter of the party. She became a fully paid up member of the party in 1932 and she also rubbed shoulders with many people and men who served in the SA and also the SS. She would attend rallies and become more involved in the part and through her activity she met her future husband Carl Otto Koch in 1934. Two years later the pair married and the following year Carl became the commandant of the Buchenwald concentration camp. Now, Ilse had already began working inside of the concentration camps before her husband became a commandant, as she served as a guard and a secretary at Sachsenhausen. Her fiancé was also serving as the commandant, but it was at Buchenwald where Ilse Koch really gained a notorious reputation for participating in the Holocaust. Now, inside of Buchenwald, 280,000 prisoners during the time it was in operation found themselves imprisoned there. Over 50,000 were killed inside a number of ways. All of the prisoners were forced to work in local armament factories and for the German war effort, and there was horrific conditions there. There was also a huge lack of food, which led to prisoners starving to death. One of the biggest causes of death was the camp's harsh conditions and the fact that malnutrition and disease was rife at the camp. There was also a significant amount of human experimentation that occurred at Buchenwald, many of the prisoners were murdered by executions. These shootings and hangings were often performed in public to deter any prisoners from poor behaviour. The prisoners came from all over Europe and also the Soviet Union, and they included Jews, Poles and those from Eastern Europe. When Ilse Koch's husband became the commandant, she jumped at the chance to become involved in the brutal practices of the concentration camp. She gained a notorious reputation for being one of the most feared members of staff at Buchenwald, the camp which she called her home. One of the first things she did as the Commandant's wife was to use a large amount of the money that had been confiscated and stolen from prisoners who arrived at the camp to create a huge indoor sports arena. This cost in today's money over £1 million, and in this arena Ilsa would ride her horses. Her husband was seen as a key and efficient part of the concentration camp system, and he was also involved in establishing other camps such as Maidenek Extermination Camp. Whilst he was away, Ilse stayed at Buchenwald and continued to be horrific here. Away from riding her horses, Koch would often taunt prisoners until they looked at her. When they turned to look at her, she would then brandish her whip and beat them horrifically, sometimes even to death. She was also known for sending children to their deaths and being involved in the selection processes to send prisoners inside of gas chambers. By doing this, Ilse was playing God with people's lives, acting as the executioner. But one disturbing practice that she indulged in was creating furniture with the skin from prisoners. She would parade around Buchenwald on horseback, looking for prisoners who had 
distinctive tattoos. The prisoner would then be seized by the guards and was taken to be killed. But what happened before that is that Ilsa would order the skin with the tattoo on to be taken and cut from the poor prisoner's body. They would then be cremated and the skin would be used to make lampshades and other objects. There were also collections of prisoners' internal organs collected by Ilsa. She was truly an awful woman, but her reign over Buchenwald came to an abrupt end when her husband Karl was arrested on charges of embezzlement. He was also arrested on charges of murdering prisoners, and was found guilty, and was then later executed at the camp he oversaw. Ilsa Koch was also known for having a number of lovers at Buchenwald, but she was acquitted of her crimes due to the lack of evidence. German investigators could not prove that her lampshades and objects were made from human skin, and she claimed they were in fact from goats. Following the liberation of Buchenwald, word travelled about Ilse's involvement in horrific crimes against humanity, and public pressure forced her to be brought to trial. She was brought before the General Military Government Court for the trial of war crimes in 1947. She was accused along with 30 others, and while she was in the courtroom, she was pregnant. Despite her being with child, she was charged with participating in criminal plan for aiding, abetting and participating in the murders at Buchenwald. Despite being clearly involved in horrific crimes, she was not sentenced to death and was instead sentenced to life in prison for violation of the laws and custom of war. Her child was born whilst she was imprisoned and it later went on to a foster home. Two years after she was convicted, Ilse Koch's sentence was reduced to four years as it was said that there was no convincing evidence that she selected inmates for extermination in order to secure tattooed skin or that she possessed any articles made of human skin. She was later released and it was said by the general who released her, I hold no sympathy for Ilse Koch. She was a woman of depraved character and ill repute. She had done many things, reprehensible and punishable, undoubtedly under German law. We were not trying her for those things, we were trying her as a war criminal on specific charges. Her release outraged the public, and she was then arrested again and was placed on trial a second time. This trial began in 1950, and she collapsed a number of times during it, and a huge amount of witnesses were heard who told of Ilse Koch's evil. Many testified they had seen Koch selecting prisoners to be killed, and the court later convicted her of charges of incitement to murder, incitement to attempted murder, and incitement to the crimes of committing grievous bodily harm. She was yet again sentenced to life in prison, and she petitioned for her release, but every time this was rejected. On the 1st of September 1967, Ilse Koch took her own life in prison. She hung herself at Eyecatch Women's Prison. She had become delusional in prison, and was often heard screaming and wailing at night. She was also beaten in her cell by other prisoners, but following her death, she took many different secrets to her grave. She was one of the most evil women involved in the Holocaust and the concentration camp system within Germany. Ilse Koch's evil saw her murder and slaughter a number of innocent prisoners and also beat prisoners sadistically. Her nickname of the Witch of Buchenhurst was definitely an appropriate and suitable one. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.